So uh, I went a little crazy camera gear shopping here in Japan. And you can't blame me, especially with the dollar being so strong right now. Well, shopping in general, really. But since this is a camera channel, I thought I'd speak from this perspective. And on top of that, tourists don't have to pay taxes on the purchase. So it brings the price down even further. <laughs> So we'll break down what I got and later go over the shopping places and process. And if you're not caught up, yes, we are back in Japan for the next couple of months. I'm trying to make another Japan travel film, but this time around more focused on the autumn leaves while sharing with you guys the behind the scenes process. And to do that, we decided to pick up a few new extra piece of gear to help with our productions. So the first item on the list is the DJI Osmo 6, a mobile phone gimbal. And I got this for about $130 new versus the $160 I would have paid for at home. So I actually bought the Osmo 5 when the new iPhone 14 dropped about a month ago and we made a LA travel cinematic film with them. It's a pretty cool video, I highly recommend checking it out later. But after we made the film, the 6 was announced and I was still within my return window for the 5. Whew. And I was going to exchange it out for the 6 during the return but held off to buy it here in Japan cause you know. With this, I am planning on making another iPhone or Xperia cinematic film while we're here, so uh, stay tuned for that. The next item on the list is the Sony 24mm f2.8G, and at home, I would have paid $600 for it, but here in Japan, I got it for... $350. Okay, hold on, so let me clarify. This is actually secondhand pricing. It's technically $562 new here in Japan after the yen conversion. But this used 24 is in very good condition. Just a couple of small scrapes on the outer edge here and it's something that would have happened anyways. Normal wear and tear stuff. But there's no dust, no optical defects, the focus works great, it is silent, and the image is sharp. For $350, this is a steal. So why did I get this? I made a whole video talking about how I began using a teleprompter to make it easier for my editors to edit my long form videos. And the specific teleprompter that I use is a compact travel size one and it uses a smartphone to reflect the script. The only caveat is that you have to use a short lens. If you were to use a longer lens, you would actually see the entire teleprompter vignetting in your footage. So something like a 16 to 35 would have been too big to use on the wide end. However, if your lens is short enough, you can avoid it entirely, or at the very least, only have a little bit of it showing up. Now, in the case of the 24mm G, it's short enough and still gives me that wide look that I like for these types of talking head style A-Rows. Now, we will see the teleprompters on the edge, but turning on active stabilization crops it out. It's about a 10% crop, so it's not that bad. Moving on, we got the Sony G1 mic, and I got this for half the price. $75 versus the $150 I would have paid for brand new at home. Yet again, another product that I bought used, but in excellent condition. Now, it's no secret that I love my Pocket RX100 Mark 7 camera for all of my casual days. I love it for photography, particularly for its reach, 24 to 200 millimeter zoom. And I much prefer to vlog with my RX100 Mark 7. And for the last several years, I've always wanted a high quality compact mic for it. And the G1, being the size of a Vienna sausage, fits the bill. The audio quality is definitely a lot better over the onboard on the RX100 Mark 7. And yes, this can be used on top of the hot shoe of compatible Sony cameras without the mic jack. All right, time out. So why do I buy used gear? I personally done it all my life. I don't mind it at all. In fact, when I started the channel nearly six years ago, I amassed a lot of my APS-C lens collection here in Japan at the same exact stores. Especially when it comes to Japan, secondhand culture here is very, very prominent. And they always tend to take really good care of their stuff. So you can actually find a lot of these camera gear here still in immaculate condition for a really good price. Especially with map camera, where I buy a lot of my use gear from, I find your description of their products to be quite honest, right down to the invisible dust that you will never see. And no, this video is not sponsored by Map Camera, though I wish though. And lastly, we got the new Insta360 X3. Technically, this is Vivian's. She's been getting into all of these fun little gadgets like drone, film cameras, and now 360. 
This one wasn't a huge savings, to be honest with you. The final pricing is $425 versus the $450 that we would have paid for at home. So this time around, we didn't bring our DJI Mini 3 Pro. Japan drone laws are actually really strict, so we wanted to see if we can get away doing some fake drone shots with the Insta360. As you can see, I picked up quite a few items here myself, but no full-blown Sony cameras, because, you know, your boy already has it all. Just, just kidding, all right? I, I, I don't have it all. However, I am scoping out for a used RX1, the true pocketish full frame sensor camera. I haven't quite found it yet. None are in stock, but since we're here for three months, I can check back constantly. It's a camera from 2014. If you've been following the channel in the last several months, I borrowed this camera, I tested it, I compared it to the other popular EDC cameras, and I finally set out for this particular model. In my comprehensive EDC video, I said I prefer the Fuji X100V for its fast results but Vivian wouldn't let me take her so I have to set my eyes on the RX1 <laughs> However, you wouldn't want to buy Sony cameras here in Japan anyway because the menu will be all in Japanese. They sell separate international models with the other languages, but those are at a different pricing. Usually more expensive. But if you have basic Japanese katakana reading, you can actually get by navigating through the Japanese models. Now, as far as I know, the other name brand cameras don't have this odd regional difference. But anyways, so the top spots you want to hit up. Come to Shinjuku in Tokyo. There are camera store meccas here. Of course, there are a ton spread across Japan, but Shinjuku is my hub. First one on the list is Yodobashi, literally floors of camera gear. They're kind of like a Best Buy in the States where they also sell other electronics like games, computers, household gadgets, etc. So expect to spend a lot of time around this area to explore all the quadrants. Oh, and film shooters, I am sorry, but the price for film rolls aren't cheaper here. They're still quite expensive and they're often out of stock. The next one on the list is Map Camera. You know, my favorite spot for used gear. And generally, in my opinion, they have the best prices for secondhand stuff. Again, since 2016, I spent quite a bit of dough here, but they have different floors for different brands. So again, expect to spend some time out browsing around. Next up is Kitamura, also a good spot for used gear. There's one right across from Map Camera, but there's also another location on the other side of Shinjuku, which looks super modern. I highly recommend you go check it out just for the aesthetics, but they also seem to have some of the more vintage stuff over there in that location as well. And there is also Big Camera, similar to Yorobashi in that they are an electronic mecha store. If you're familiar with the famous Big Clo here in Shinjuku, the combo between Big Camera and Uniqlo, unfortunately, unique the uniqlo portion is gone now not sure why but it's just big camera so for price conversion i just use google i type in yen to usd and i just go price shopping around and any price listed are usually with tax in so if you're on a tourist visa you can present your passport and further save on tax I got it! I got the Sony RX1. We found it yesterday at Map Camera and I got it for $500. It's going on eBay for about $700 right now, so I saved $200. I mean, just look at the condition. It isn't it isn't bad at all. I mean, like the text here and all that stuff, normal wear and tear, it's turning yellow a bit, but the glass, the glass is fine. The focus still works incredibly well. Granted, the menu, like I said, you buy a, Jap uh, a Sony camera here in Japan, it is in Japanese, but I can read a little bit of Katsukana, so I can probably figure out my ways around the camera, but oh, oh my god. To say this is my dream camera of 2022 is an understatement, but if you guys have been following the journey of all the tests and all the comparisons against the EDC, I think I have arrived to the right decision, the Sony RX1. Can't wait to shoot more with this. Anyway, come support the economy here in Japan, clear out their selection, and let me know on Twitter or Instagram what you picked up. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge whatsoever. Perfect for people like me because I just want to make YouTube videos for you guys and not have to worry about coding my entire website. Simply just select one of their templates to get started. Every aspect is easily customizable with their drag and drop feature. Whether you're in need of a portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a simple blog, design it with Squarespace. Use my link down below to test it out, and when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code JasonVong to save 10% off. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.